in control theory, Laplace transform uh, plays a very important role. It uh, allows us to analyze complicated systems in, in the time domain, and it will be a more simpler and intuitive way when we convert them or transform them into another form, which is called the frequency domain or the S domain. And this is uh, very crucial, especially for uh, control system analysis. And we can do so much when we, we transform them into uh, the frequency domain. So this transform changes the convolution operation uh, in, in time domain. If you multiply uh, time functions, you do convolution. But if we convert them first into another uh, into into frequency domain, then those uh, complicated operations will be just a simple algebraic uh, multiplications, and it will allow allow us later on when we define uh, the transfer function of a system in chapter uh, two. So this is just a review. The uh, Laplace transform is already discussed uh, from differential equation up to advanced math, uh, engineering mathematics one. So first, we, we define uh, what's the definition of a, a Lap Laplace transform. So if we have a function f of t, now we want to transform this one. That's why it's Laplace transform. So the symbol for Laplace is that capital L. And if you want to take the Laplace of this certain function in time domain, so the result will be another function. So I will, the notation that we will be using, if you have a small letter F for the function, it means it's in time domain. If you have a capital letter or uppercase letter, then uh, this means this is in S domain already. So it's already... Uh, transformed into S domain. So what's the definition? What, what will be F of S? So the basic definition, this is just the integral of E raised to negative S times T. Multiply it with that function that we want to convert, dt, and uh, integrating it from zero to infinity. So this is the basic definition of a simple Laplace transform. So if you know this, you can take the Laplace of any function you want as long as you know how to integrate them uh, from zero to infinity. And this s here, this variable s here, this is a special variable, uh, or this is a constant later on. This is uh, a complex number, which is equal to this one, s equals sigma plus delta omega. And this is with respect to the frequency. That's why it's uh, S domain is also the frequency. If you remember omega, omega is the natural frequency, which is 2 pi f. So it's just a frequency. When you see S, meaning you're in frequency domain or S domain. Now let's apply this uh, definition to solve some uh, functions for uh, Laplace. So first, if f of t is the first one, if it equal to 1, constant 1, what's the equivalent of this one into the S domain? So if you apply the definition of Laplace, so the Laplace of 1 will be equal to f of s, and this is the integral of e raised to negative s t, multiply it by f of t, which is 1, dt from 0 to infinity. Then evaluate this integral, and this will be equal to just the integral of e raised to negative s t. Remember, s is just a constant here. Uh, the variable here is t. So if we integrate e raised to negative s t, this is equal to negative 1 over s, that s there, and it's just the same e raised to negative s times t. Then applying the limit from zero to infinity by using the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. So this will become a negative, we can factor out negative one over s. Then we have here e raised to uh, negative s times infinity 
a constant times infinity negative, then this will be negative infinity, then minus e raised to 0. Or we can do the limit the proper way. We take the limit as t approaches infinity of e raised to negative s t, then that's the upper limit, then minus the limit as t approaches 0 of e raised to negative s t. Then this will become e raised to negative infinity and e raised to negative infinity is negative infinity 1 over that one. 1 over infinity is equivalent to 0. So this will be equal to 0. And this one uh, raised to 0, any number raised to 0 is equal to 1. So the answer now, the Laplace of 1 is equal to, this is negative here, negative 1, you multiply it by negative 1 over s, or that is just 1 over s. So the Laplace of a constant 1 is just equal to 1 over s. This is the equivalent in s domain. In general, if you have any constant, so if f of t is any constant, k, if you take the Laplace of that constant, then if you look at our derivation here of the definition, what will happen? So uh, this one here will become that constant and you can still move that k outside the integral sign. Then the one here will also become the constant. So in general, it's just equal to k over s, that constant divided by s. So it's just not for one. You can uh, take the, the Laplace of any constant and you just divide it by s and that will be the Laplace or the equivalent of that into the s domain. Next, for another function f of t, if we have, uh, it's not a constant, what if f of t is equal to e or just t? Let's go look at t. What's the Laplace of uh, t? This is not a constant. So how do we do this? Again, by definition, uh, the Laplace of that, Laplace of t, now will be equal to the integral of e raised to negative as t times f of t, which is t, dt from 0 to infinity. And how do we integrate this? t times e raised to negative as t. So to integrate this, we need to use Integration by parts because this is multiplication. So we need to use uh, IBP. Let u be equal to, we can choose t. So that my du is dt. Then for my u dv, your dv will be equal to e raised to negative as t. So that v is equal to the integral of that, which is negative. Uh, 1 over s, e raised to negative s, t. And do the integration. So this will be so the, the integral of this, e raised to negative s, t times t, dt will be equal to u, d, u times b. So that's negative t times 1 over s, so t over s times e raised to negative s, t. So this is uv, then minus the integral of v du, the integral of v du, where's v negative 1 over s e raised to negative s t times du, which is dt. Then simplify this, evaluate t over s e raised to negative s t, this will become positive. The integral of 1 over s e raised to negative s t. So we already integrate that. You just need to multiply again the inverse of that s, 1 over s, negative 1 over s. And you multiply it with 1 over s, so this will become uh, negative 1 over s squared. So this will become negative 1 over s squared. Then you just copy negative s t. Then you take the, the limit here from 0 to infinity. And applying the fundamental theorem, upper limit minus lower limit. Again, uh, for the upper limit, so you take the limit of this whole, when t approaches infinity, when t approaches infinity, 
then we subtract the limit when t approaches 0. So what will be the answer here when t approaches infinity? This will become, again, this will become 0. You multiply by t, this is still 0. This 1, e leads to negative infinity. 1 over infinity is still 0. So here, at when t approaches 0, so this is 0 multiplied by any number is also equal to 0. So the only remaining term will be this one. e raised to negative or, or 0, this will become 1, and you multiply it by 1 over s squared. Then this is negative. Then this is also negative. So negative, negative will become positive. So therefore, the limit or the, the Laplace of t will be just equal to 1 over s squared. 1 over s squared. Let's take another one. Number 3. What if f of t is equal to, let's say, e raised to a constant a multiplied by t. So if you take the Laplace of e raised to at, so this will be the integral of e raised to negative s t times e raised to at dt. This is f of t from 0 to infinity. And uh, this is multiplication, so we can add the, the exponent. So this will become e raised to we can factor out that negative so that we then you can also factor out that t. So this will be s minus 8 and factor out that t. d t. So from 0 to infinity. Then remember, s minus a here is just a constant. So the integral of this is just equal to negative 1 over s minus a. Then you multiply it with e raised to negative s minus a times t from 0 to infinity. So from 0 to infinity, upper limit minus lower limit again. So if it's infinite here, it will become 0. If it's 0, it's, it will become uh, 1. And that's the lower limit. So one zero minus 1. And negative 1 multiplied by this, this negative will become positive. So the answer for this one, so the Laplace of e raised to a constant t is just equal to uh, 1 over positive 1 over s minus a. So this is the, the way of solving Laplace by using the definition. But later on, uh, there's complicated problems, especially in control system, that we cannot, uh, this is very not practical to use. So, we can use the, the Laplace table. We call it the Laplace table. It's the, the, the compilation of the derived formulas of different functions that involves, especially for us, in control system. So, let's try to look at the Laplace table. This one here. So, this is the Laplace table. Laplace table. In practice, we use this one. We don't derive the formula. But if you want to derive the formula, uh, it's not in the table, then you can use the definition of the uh, Laplace transform. So at, these are the different functions, f of t. So 1, 1 over s. Now here, we have t raised to n. T raised to n, where n is any number, the formula of the Laplace of that is just equal to n factorial over s raised to n. That's one. And we have here e raised to at. We already derived that one. 1 over s minus a is correct. Then sine, cosine, and so on. Now let's apply this. Let's take an example. Applying the table. Example number 4. Find the Laplace transform of f of t equals t plus 4t squared. So if you use the, the definition here, the solution will be much longer because you will be integrating more terms. So using the table now, the solution, so the Laplace of 
t plus 4t squared. We can distribute also the Laplace because the Laplace is the integral and integral can be distributed. So this can be written as the Laplace of t plus the Laplace of 4t squared. Then using the table directly, the plus of t, the exponent of this one, n equals 1. Oh, n equals 1, then n factorial, 1 factorial. So this will be 1 factorial over, over s raised to n plus 1, so 1 plus 1. So this will be 1 factorial, or just 1, all over s raised to n plus 1, 1 plus 1. Then, this one, 4, you can uh, put 4 before that. Then, take the in the, the Laplace of t squared. Your n here is 2. So, we have n factorial. It will be 2 factorial. So, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. This is 2 all over s raised to 2 plus 1 or n plus 1. So therefore, the Laplace now, or the f of s, will be equal to 1 over s squared plus 4 times 2, 8 over s cubed. So this is the Laplace of that function, t plus 4t squared. So that's how we use the table. Now let's do some more complicated examples. Determine f of s. Determine f of s. If the derivative of f of t with respect to t is equal to 3 plus 4 times t, where f of t or f0 is equal to 0. So the initial con there's an initial condition here. Uh, it's equal to 0. Actually, the 0 initial condition. So we need to take or calculate f of s. So just copy this function. We have a derivative here. So if you look at the table, we have a Laplace of the derivative here, derivative and derivative of f of t. So this is just the, the function and this is the, the result for the Laplace. So we apply that. So you take the Laplace at both sides of this equation. So what will be the Laplace of uh, d f of t dt? So this is a first order derivative. So the n here is equal to 1. So if n is equal to 1, we can just use the second one, s of s times f of s minus f0. So s times f of s minus f of 0. And we also take the Laplace of the right part of the equation. Laplace of 3 is 3 over s, that's a constant. Then Laplace of 4 times t, uh, your t is, your n for t is 1, so that will be s squared. 1 factorial is 1, so this will be 4 over s squared. And it's given the initial condition f0 is equal to 0. So let's make it 0. Then we want to determine f of s. So solving f of s, this will be equal to, we can multiply s or divide s at uh, both sides. So this will become r o 3 over s squared. Then this will become 4 over s cubed. So this will be f of s. So if there's an initial condition, initial value for f of 0, you need to put that value here. It's like this next example. Example. Six. Determine, determine f of s if 
double prime means this is the second derivative of f of t plus 2 times f of prime t plus 3 times f of t equals 0. Then the conditions, initial conditions were f of 0 is not equal to 1, it's equal to, or it's not equal to 0, it's equal to 1. And we need another condition, f of prime 0. And you can make it 0. We need f of prime here, f of prime 0, because in our formula, if it's a second order derivative, so your n is 2. So we cannot use this formula, we can use the, the other one. So it will be s raised to n, f of s minus s raised to n minus 1 f of 0 minus s n minus 2 f prime 0 and so on so we need to uh, have f prime 0 at least f prime 0 here if it's third derivative then you need to have the second derivative of 0 f double prime 0 until uh, n minus 1 so n minus 1 is 0 so solution if you take this equation, you take the Laplace at both sides, and we want to solve for f of s. So first, for the second order, so s, our n is uh, 2. Our n here is 2. n is equal to 2. So therefore, this will be s squared multiplied by f of s. And we need to subtract what's next. S raised to n minus S raised to n minus 1. S raised to n minus 1. S raised to n minus 1. What is n minus 1? Uh, n is 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So S raised to 1. We multiply it by n minus 1. Multiply it by f of 0. So multiply this one with f of 0. Then is it done? Not yet. We have still s raised to n minus 2. So minus s raised to n minus 2. What is n minus 2? n is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is just equal to 1. And you just multiply it with f prime 0. So this is the Laplace of the second order derivative. Second order derivative based from the table. And for the next one, for the first derivative, uh, 2, we can factor out the 2, then uh, this will be s, s raised to 1 times f of s, and we just need to subtract f of 0. So for that, that is for the first derivative. Then plus 3 times the plus of f of t is this capital F of s, and this will be equal to 0. And we want to determine f of s here. But first, we substitute the value for f of 0. This will be equal to 1. This will be equal to 0. This will be equal to 1. So s squared f of s minus s plus 2 times s f of s minus 2 times 1 minus 2 plus 3 f of s equals 0. Then, calculating for f of s, we can factor out f of s. f of s. Then, we have here s squared. We have 2s plus 2s. Then, we have plus 3. Then, all the, the coefficients or the constant that has, or the, the, the terms that has not have f of s, we put it at the right side. Your negative s will become positive s. Negative 2 will become positive 2. So now, f of s dividing both sides with this term, so s plus 2 all over s squared plus 2s plus 3. So this is now the Laplace transform or f of s given that equation. Uh, last example before we go to inverse Laplace. Example number... 7. Determine f of s over g of s if
given this function where the initial conditions are zero, for f of zero is equal to zero. So we need to determine f of s divided by g of s. Here we have two functions, f and g. So solution, we take the Laplace at both sides, then do the Laplace transform. So this will be 3 times s. We can factor out that 3s, f of s, minus f of 0. That's the Laplace of the derivative. Then for the integral, this is 5 here, 1 over 5, plus 1 over 5, the Laplace of uh, in integral of f of t. So we go back again to the table for the integral. For the integral, the Laplace is instead of multiplying it by s, we divide it by s. So you just need to divide it by s. So this will be f of s over s. Then minus the Laplace of g of t, you just make it capital letter g, and this will be equal to zero f of zero is equal to zero then we can solve for f of s over g of s so 3s factor out f of s we have 3s here then plus 1 over 5s then we put gs negative gs at the other side it will become positive g of s then dividing both sides by g of s and also the this term here so f of s over g of s now will be equal to 1 all over that whole term 3s plus 1 over 5s 5s we can simplify this by multiplying uh, s over 3 at the numerator and denominator s over 3 s over t so that this will be in this form you don't need to do this here but later on when we are uh, solving transfer function uh, you should convert them or simplify them into this type into this form 1 over 15 so this will be our final answer this is f of s over g of s so that is Laplace transform. So to the next video, we will be discussing the inverse Laplace transform.